Hey, it's Lauren. Today we are going to talk all about eyebrows. Overall grooming, shaping techniques, filling techniques, you name it, we're going to talk about it. Um, I personally am someone that has followed eyebrow trends in the past and I don't really do that anymore. When it comes to the physical removal of hair, um, I will play with products to achieve a trendy effect, but I've really come to embrace my own eyebrow shape a bit more over time um, after letting them fill in after years of plucking them very thin. <laughs> I spent most of 2020 allowing my eyebrows to kind of fill back in and resume their natural shape, at least at this point in my life. Um, they're definitely not the way that they were when I was a child after years of plucking, but you know, they are what they are. So this video obviously is a little more subjective, um, but my hope is that at the end of it, you'll be able to take away some steps and techniques to shaping whatever brow hair you do have, um, and maybe giving you some new tips and tricks and helping to change your perception about the artistry of eyebrows. I personally don't get my eyebrows done anywhere anymore for a few reasons. When I was in cosmetology school, I was horrified with waxing practices. Um, so many places are just not hygienic when it comes to waxing and they will leave the wax stick in the pot and use that on you and everybody else after you. So you're sharing everybody's face funk. And after like having been waxed before and seeing that actually in person after going to cosmetology school, I swore off waxing because it gives you those bumps and that irritation um, and that's just gross. <laughs> so personally, I just don't trust waxing. Um, also, I've done threading in the past, which I actually really liked a lot of the times, but you have to have the right person. And again, a lot of times people have a different vision of what they think your eyebrows should be than what you think they should be. And it can be really challenging to find the right person to achieve the look you're going for. Um, and honestly, because of the way that brow hairs sometimes don't grow back, I'm just not willing to chance it anymore. So I groom my own eyebrows. Um, I do plucking and, um, I trim them and you'll see, I mean, you've seen, if you've watched my videos, I fill them quite often. So these are my natural brows and I really don't go overboard with removing hair at this point. I'm gonna come in real close here. What I do is I focus on these little hairs way down here. I have very naturally high peaked brows, which I have come to really appreciate. It's more of a family trait. I, uh, my grandfather had very high peaks at the tops of his eyebrows. And so now I kind of celebrate that um, as a family trait and I just think it's kind of fun. So. You'll notice with my eyebrows, I have a really high peak. I tend to have a little bit of a gap and my tails of my brows are quite a bit finer. Um, I do have hypothyroidism and that can cause the tails of your brows to thin out over time, which has happened. <laughs> um, so basically I clean up all my stray hairs underneath here. Sometimes what I will do is straighten out the bottom of this brow just a little bit. Anything that comes too far over into the center, I remove. From the top, I do get quite a few hairs up above. And oftentimes with this peak of my brow, I'll have like one hair that gets a little wild. And, and if I put brow gel on it, it looks a little extra. Um, and also with this, you'll notice if I put something over it, you'll have a couple hairs here that will kind of jump above that natural line and shape. So I remove those as well, but it's nothing extreme. And I did have the really trendy brows um, earlier on in my life where they were maybe two brow hairs thick and um, thankfully they grew back. Some of you if you have gone through that, you may not have had your brow hairs grow back. So I encourage you just to embrace whatever it is that they're doing at this point. Use products to fill them in if you are so inclined. Um, and you know, obviously 
you're probably going to still have some strays. And so I think it's totally normal to want to clean those up so they're not just random stragglers outside of the actual brow shape. So what I do with my brows is I start by plucking those hairs. You'll notice I brushed all of my brow hairs up and this allows to see kind of the overall shape. So what I'm first going to do is remove those really low hairs that have filled back in. And you'll notice too, when I do this, I wipe those hairs off because if you get too many hairs in your tweezers, they're not going to be able to grip the hair to pull it out. Okay, so that's a majority of the lower kind of hairs that have filled in down here. Now, when we're moving closer to the brow, I operate with a lot of caution. So I always pay a lot of attention right here because I think a lot of times it's easy to create a really strong squared off shape and then having like a big jump upwards. And I really try to avoid that. I try to almost smooth it out. So, and you'll notice I've got a couple hairs kind of coming in here and I almost come in down at an angle. My goal being to not make a giant jump after the front of my brow. And again, it's very important when you're doing this to make sure you are brushing your brows up so you can see where that line is. Now, normally because my brow tails are a little bit thinner, I don't get a ton of new growth through here, but sometimes I'll get a few little hairs that will come in just below. And I like to clean that up and make it look really nice and open. Something I will say, if you are unsure about removing a hair, what you can do is brush up the shape, get your tweezers and don't pull the hair. But what you can do is sort of move it down out of the way and see if you like how that changes the shape. And if you do, pull it out. <laughs> Something I also think is really important while you are doing your brows. I do not use magnifying mirrors when I am doing my brows. And here is why. When you are so zoomed up and so close and you're trying to make a straight line wherever you are removing hair, if you are too close and you are seeing each individual hair and you are so fixated on that, you'll start removing more and more and more <laughs> because it's never going to look completely straightened out and you'll end up plucking a lot more than you want to. Now, I understand if you have trouble with your eyesight, you don't wear contacts, that's a little bit different. But if you do have to use a magnifying mirror, I encourage you to pluck a few hairs, really sit back and look at a normal mirror to check the overall shape of your eyebrow before you proceed. Because the last thing you wanna do is really go in hard with a magnifying mirror and then sit back after a while and go, oh, <laughs> and then have to do it on the other side or you'll have a really thin brow and a really full brow. So that's the majority of the hairs that I want to remove from underneath. It's not a lot for me. Um, I'm going to take a closer look right through here. There's a couple little hairs that I think if we remove, it's going to look a little bit neater and tidier. The other thing too, when it comes to this corner part of your brows, if you have this line a little bit higher up, for me personally, just a little bit higher than where my natural brow wants to drop down to, it can really open up your eye shape. 
Now, again, I encourage you not to go wild with this step and completely remove the front of your eyebrow. That's not what I'm saying to do. But if you come in here and you look below where this pencil is, you can see a couple little hairs that hang down a little lower. And when you remove those, it can really just open up your eye shape. So let me do that. Very, very subtle. Doesn't have to be a lot of hairs, but it can make a big difference. Now, like I mentioned, I do get quite a few hairs up above my eyebrows. And, you know, some people will say, don't pluck above your eyebrows. Some people are all for it. I don't really change the top shape of my eyebrows very much, but if I do have some strays, I do like to remove those. And right now, you can even see it from a bit of a distance. I have like one hair up here on top of that peak, which I like the peaks, but there is that one hair that's a little bit stray and just doesn't really follow the natural shape of my brow. So this is what I do. When I do the tops of my brows, I brush all of this down so you can see what that shape is doing. And I just really, I stick very close to where my brow is, but I'm going to clean that up a bit. And I don't really take a whole lot from here just because I don't have a lot through there. You can see. Sometimes too, the hairs that grow up above my eyebrow, they're not as thick as what falls in my natural arch. Um, but they still add kind of a dark cast around my eyebrows. So when I remove them, it gives a much sharper looking shape without really taking much away from my natural brow. Now, this is where the kind of trickier part comes in. You can see there's some natural gaps there. And the hardest part is trying to see, are there any hairs that come out above that natural line I have made the mistake before of taking too many hairs from the tops of my eyebrows and then they just look very strange and unnatural and I had to fill them a lot more and they sat lower on my face. They didn't have a very lifted appearance. So I think that's why a lot of people will tell you don't pluck from the top of your eyebrows and I don't agree with that. I think that you can but there's a way of doing it so you don't make it harder on yourself later on. Now I didn't do a ton of, you know, removal to that natural brow shape, but looking when I sit back a little bit and you can look, this brow just has a sharper appearance overall compared to this eyebrow. And it's a very, very easy thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and pluck all of the excess hairs on this side, and then we will move into trimming the eyebrows as well. Okay, so there is our completed brow hair removal. It's very, very subtle. I don't go wild with it. I really try to stick with the kind of natural shape that I have of my eyebrow at this point. Um, now, the next step that we're going to move into is to remove some of this length from the brow hair. Now, what I like to do with this, I have a very small pair of scissors. Um, which feels a little less frightening versus large scissors on your face. So what I like to do for this step is I will hold this brow spoolie, kind of comb through your brows, hold those hairs up and trim them off. And what I do is when I'm doing this, I'll just show you while I do it. What I do is I will hold those brow hairs up and you'll be able to see where those hairs stick past the natural um, shape of your eyebrows. And what I do, come in very close, get those brow hairs going up, open up your scissors, and you're going to just trim essentially across the top of your eyebrow. And what I do is I get very, very close to that natural line towards the front of my brows. I make those hairs much shorter. And then as I continue to move down the eyebrow, I start to come up a little further away and allow those hairs to be a little bit longer. Reason being, um, 
I don't have as many hairs over here. And these hairs tend to kind of stick together and look a little bit thicker and darker. So when you remove some of that length, it creates a bit more balance and then it allows for a little bit of extra length and kind of creates a more balanced overall tonal appearance of the eyebrows. Also, because I do tend to brush my eyebrows up, I really try to take note of kind of um, the length of those brow hairs because sometimes you'll stand them up and they will just be really, really long. I do tend to lay that down, but now really when I get to the ends of my eyebrows, I just kind of nick those hairs. I really don't take a lot off of them because it helps to maintain the overall thickness appearance of my eyebrows. Ta-da. And you can see compared to this side, this just looks a little more balanced, a little more uniform in color from the thickness here all the way to the end. Compared to over here, it looks a little bit almost hazier and um, you can tell there's some more patchiness because the fronts are a lot darker looking because there's a lot more hair laying down over itself compared to the ends. So we'll go ahead and trim that off. Notice how that really just kind of balanced it out a bit. And sometimes too, what I'll notice is if I have a section of my eyebrow that looks a little bit darker and thicker, oftentimes it means some of those hairs are a little bit longer and they might still need a little bit of a trim. So, That looks a little more balanced. Now, the other thing I do, because my brows naturally tend to fall down, is I will brush these down. And really what I'm looking for is any of these hairs that are falling past the natural brow line. Because if they were to fall down, I don't want them to fall past where my arch is. So you can see, there are just a few it's not as dramatic as when you really raise it up. So I'm just gonna trim those off. You can see some through there too. Okay, and there you have your removed hair and trimmed overall shape. This is kind of the canvas to which I like to start with when I go to fill in my eyebrows and when I fill in my eyebrows, that's where I can be a little more adventurous because it's not permanent and it's not going to damage those follicles and then have them never come back. As we get older, a lot of times, um, a lot of women will experience this where you've removed brow hairs and then they just stop coming back. And oftentimes, like as we do get older, that seems to increase in prevalence. And so personally, I don't want to make my eyebrows so thin or follow a trend so much that it's already going to remove more hair and then I'm gonna to continue to lose more as I age. So um, I tend to play with the trends with products that I remove rather than removing the hair to fit the trends. Also, I personally don't like eyebrow shaving. I don't like the stubbliness as it comes back in. I would much rather just stick with what my eyebrows are trying to do. Now, as a general rule of thumb, when I'm not trying to mimic a trend in eyebrows, I like to really just kind of enhance what I have. Something that I also think that you can do if you really want to embrace a more natural shape is look at photos of yourself from childhood and look at what your brows were doing because that's what you were born with. That's what fits your face, right? So that's what I really try to do. Obviously, I'm a little older and I've plucked my eyebrows a lot and I have a more sculpted appearance than what I had in my childhood. But I think that's a really good guideline to kind of follow the shape. So when I was a kid, I had more of a peak up at the top. My underneath part was a little bit straighter. Um, obviously, I had more hairs underneath that were kind of filling in that arched appearance. Um, I'm going to work with what I have now, but that's kind of a good thing to remember. 
Um, now, if you are someone, again, if you have really, really plucked your eyebrows, but you want a fuller brow appearance, before I show you on my own brows, I'm going to show you something else. So if you go in and you don't have many brow hairs and you really want a fuller looking brow, you can create a shape either with a pencil or I would say even a powder. And you want to go a bit lighter than your natural brow hairs. And you can create really fine kind of hair like strokes. I'm sorry if this looks weird because I'm doing it from the side. You can create really fine kind of hair like strokes. And then once that is on your face, you can sort of soften that out with a spoolie. And now for a more realistic appearance, what you can do is take a brow pen that actually matches your hair that's not lighter. You want the, the under pigment that you're going to put down to be a bit lighter. And then you can go in with a brow pen that matches your hair and you can create an even stronger hair like appearance and go over where you put that powder or pencil, whichever you choose. And this can really create the illusion of having eyebrows if you don't. This is something you'll see makeup artists do. Um, I think Katie Jane Hughes is one uh, that really does this quite a bit because she has really, really fine brows. She doesn't have a lot of eyebrows. She can actually play with the shape of her eyebrows a lot because she doesn't have a lot of them. So kind of creating that under shadow essentially and then going in and really just kind of creating an eyebrow and so you'll notice when I do this that I'm kind of going up you can bring if you want more of a strong brow in the front you can really kind of raise those hairs little hair like strokes up a bit obviously the more that you layer you're going to get a thicker darker look when you get to the ends there's a really popular trend of at the bottom of the eyebrow Kind of having upward strokes, upward and outward. And then to mimic the tops of your eyebrows and creating a fuller looking appearance, which you could even see when my eyebrows are how they are naturally, they kind of fall down a little bit. What you do is you create almost like a cross hatch going back this way, just a little bit. And then I would even say go back over it just again, okay? And now from there, what I like to do is even go over that with a spoolie. And it's just going to soften out any of those marker kind of strokes. But if you are someone and you, you don't have a lot of eyebrows and you really want them to be a little bit thicker or fuller or you're trying to mimic what you had in childhood and you just don't have those hairs anymore, that's my recommendation. Put down something a little bit lighter than your hair color. Use a brow marker that matches your hair color so you can really create a brow that looks natural. You'll also notice in this video, I'm not busting out any pomades because I think that those tend to have a much less natural appearance and my personal preference is to have a more natural effect. So. Now that I've kind of shown how to create a brow if you don't have one, I'm going to show you how I fill my brows. So I, I have some random gaps, you know, and I just like to get those filled in. This is um, a really nice pencil because it has a very powdery kind of finish. So what I like to do is I kind of get that front of my brow how I want it. And I pretty, I'm pretty gentle with this. I'm not really um, going in too hard. So I like to kind of get that upper brow shape. I really kind of follow my natural brow shape and find that peak. Embrace the peak. <laughs> and um, then I'll come in a little lower and fill that in. And I, um, I kind of almost smooth out that a little bit because my natural arch can try to jump up with that top peak. Because I like how my brows were as a kid, I do kind of drop that a bit underneath. And then I like to brush this down a bit because that's where the predominant hole in my eyebrow is. So I like to be able to see really, really well what's happening there. 
And because my eyebrows tend to stop a little further in, I drag them out just a little bit more. Not a lot, but it does kind of give the illusion that they are a little bit longer and thicker and fuller than they actually are. And again, because I don't want there to be um, a big arc jump between there, I always try to drag that almost kind of straight between the two. And then just kind of spoolie through it all just to soften out any hard edges. This also allows you to see if there are any gaps. Just like so. What a difference, right? Isn't that amazing? I love a good brow pencil. Okay, let's do the other side and then we're going to finish off with one last thing. The other tip too that I have for you, when you are filling your eyebrows, try not to raise them <laughs> because when you drop them back down and you're not raising your eyebrows, they're going to be in a different position on your face. This is something I've kind of learned over the years and like I would like fill my eyebrows and I'd be like, why doesn't it look the same? Try to relax your eyebrows, relax your face and really see where they are fitting on your face. This tip also goes for when you are plucking your eyebrows. I think that's also really important because you don't want to pluck them up here and then have them drop back down. That's kind of why um, tattooing for eyebrows, they use vegetable pigments that only last for a couple of years because as we age, our face tends to shift. The skin on our bones shifts around a little bit and you don't want to have something that was tattooed way up here now sitting way down low. That's why it's designed to only last a few years and touch it back up and put them where they need to be. Okay, there is our filled brow with a pencil. Like I said, you could also use a powder for this step. And like I've mentioned earlier in my video, my eyebrows do tend to fall down throughout the day. So I like to set them in place with a brow gel. I tend to use a tinted brow gel just because I like the added kind of thickness that that color deposits, especially on the outer edges of my brows. Um, so this is just one from Thrive and I'm using the shade Audrey. And I just lightly go through there. And again, because we cut the tops of our brows, you don't have a lot of hairs that are poking up. And obviously they're a little bit more, um, thick and long through the ends here. So when you get those hairs that kind of pop up, I just use my finger to kind of lay them back down. But that way it is still maintains the thickness through the ends of my eyebrows and I get a lot of strength through that. And there you have it. That is my full brow breakdown from the overall shaping of them to thinning them out a little bit if they're too long and thick to shaping them with product. I personally, if I'm going to do anything trendy with my eyebrows, it's going to be through the use of products. If I really want to stand them up and give them a straighter appearance, I'll use a gel and draw that line out a little bit more from the top rather than on the bottom. But as a general rule of thumb, I really just kind of work with what I have at this point. I reference back to old photos of myself to get an idea of the shape that I was born with that was a little more flattering um, rather than following trends. So and if you don't have eyebrows and you are wanting to have a thicker looking eyebrow, I hope that this little tutorial is helpful for you as well. Like I mentioned, Katie Jane Hughes is a master of putting on eyebrows where she doesn't really have them. And so I learned this from her and I think that it's a fantastic piece of advice to share with you all. So I hope that you've enjoyed this. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. It helps other people to find my channel and I can continue making more content for you. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.